Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this example, I want to show you how you can use Descartes' rule of science in order to figure out just a little bit more information about the possible zeros that your polynomial might have. So in the example that I've cooked up, I have 3x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x minus 1, and you know we're going to figure out how many of the possible zeros might be positive or negative. Now the key for doing this is actually counting how many times the sign changes in the polynomial. So let's go ahead and do that. So when I look at my polynomial down here, I first notice that the, you know, the first term here doesn't have a sign, and if it doesn't have a sign, go ahead and give it a positive one. And let's count the sign changes. So here it's changing from positive to negative. There's one sign change. Looks like it changes from negative to positive. There's two sign changes. And looks like lastly it changes from a positive to a negative, so three sign changes. Now, according to Descartes' rule of sign, the number of possible positive zeros is equal to the number of sign changes, or actually less than the, that by an even number. So let me write that, that down. So possible, positive, zeros. Well, according to this rule, here's what it says, that we might have three of them since that's the number of sign changes we have. Or it could be less than 3 by an even number. So think of you know taking 3 and dropping it down by 2. Maybe it just has one positive 0. All right? Now, Descartes' rule of sign also gives you a lot of information about the negative zeros that are in here. But in order to look at those, you count the sign changes in f of negative x. All right? So we're going to take a look at 3, negative x to the third, minus 4 times a negative x squared, plus 5 times a negative x, and minus 1. Now remember, when you're evaluating things like a negative x, if you have a negative x to an even power, the sign will go away entirely. If you have a negative x to, say, an odd power, then that negative sign is actually just going to move out front. All right? So let's go through our polynomial and see exactly what happens to its signs. So here I have a negative x raised to the third power. It's odd. So that negative sign is going to move out front. Here I have negative x to an even power, negative x squared. And so that sign will go away entirely. This negative sign was already there negative x times a 5, so negative 5x, and lastly, a minus 1. All right? So now we want to count the sign changes in this polynomial. So starting at the beginning here, I have negative, um, looks like it's still negative, still negative, and still negative. Well, it looks like there are no sign changes. Well, what does that tell me about the possible negative zeros? Basically, this means that there are zero. So if I had a list of a whole bunch of possible zeros that I was testing out, I probably wouldn't start with any of the negative guys. Looks like there aren't any. And really just start testing out a lot of the positive ones. All right? So remember, when using Descartes' rule of signs, the number of sign changes in the original give you information about the possible positive zeros. The number of sign changes in f of negative x give you information about the possible negative zeros. And there you go. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.